Welcome to uh, this new segment that we have. It's called Cafe Aura at Home. Normally, you would come to Cafe Aura and get your favorite drinks, uh, craft beers, great meals, a uh, lot of fun times, company, friends, whatever. But you can't do that now. So we're bringing Cafe Aura to your home. Cafe Aura at Home. Okay? And what we're going to do is give you uh, a couple cocktails that we make. Jenna here is uh, our... Uh, expert bartender and she'll show you um, exactly what we do to create the Cafe Aura Manhattan. Now, a friend of mine, Wright Thompson, is a great writer for ESPN, brought this recipe to my house and he got it in London. And over there, they actually have it written there, it's called a Van Hatton. Now, why it's called a Van Hatton, it's an interesting story. I have no idea what it is, but it's called a Van Hatton and it tastes really good. Um, and uh, Wright made it for me. So I decided that that's how we were gonna make our Manhattans and call it a Cafe Aura Manhattan, okay? Like a Manchester Manhattan. We could make it all kinds of names, but that ain't gonna work. Like I could even go, <laughs> it's huge, you know? Like it's really big, it's a great, it's a great Manhattan. Um, so anyway, this is what we do. We take uh, some great bourbon, in our case, uh, Blade & Bow. Why? Because that's what brought, uh, uh, Wright brought to the house. Uh, Michter's, uh, famous rye, why? Because that's the one that he made. Carpano Antica, uh, Italian vermouth, some uh, Angostura orange bitters. And these are all things that you could just go to the store and, and purchase right now. Uh, fresh orange, and we'll show you how they all mix. Topped off with Luxardo cherries, uh, not maraschino cherries, okay? Don't don't make this, you know, like some fruity drink you get in the, in the tropics. Luxardo cherries. I'll show you why, because you got to use the cherry juice. Okay, so Jenna, mix them up. All right, so like he was saying about the cherry juice, uh, Gino has formulated this formula quite to a science. That's right. So and the there's a specific order to this now. Don't screw it up. There is an order. So, I have learned it. So the beginning of this cocktail, it's very simple. We're just gonna take a little bit of our cherry juice from our Luxardo cherries and put it right into your beaker. Now, if you don't have a beaker at home, totally cool, go grab a pint glass. You can do the same exact thing at you, home. You know what? If you're really in a hurry, just mix it in this glass right here and drink it right out. No pouring, no nothing. Exactly. So we're gonna do one part of each one. The first one we're gonna start with is our Carpano Antica. So we're gonna do one ounce of this right into our beaker. Now, sound effects are optional. You don't have to do that. We're just trying to be just like you at home, spilling crap all over the place, so we're trying to make this authentic. Go ahead. Now, if this was a cocktail I was making for Gino, I may put a little bit more of the Antica in there. Ah, because she knows I, I, I'm, I have a sweet tooth. The next step is we're just going to do equal parts of the rye and then the blade and bow bourbon as well. So equal parts meaning if you really wanted to do this right, you would do like... An ounce and a half of uh, of rye, excuse me, an ounce and a half of uh, bourbon. So now you've got your three ounces, and then you've got an ounce of the uh, Carpano Antique. And that's where you want to start with, and then you can adjust it to your liking. Why do we mix the, uh, the bourbon and the rye? Well, you can just do a bourbon one. You do a bourbon Manhattan. Those are the classic Manhattans. You can do a rye Manhattan. You can do a, a vodka Manhattan. I, I, had, I had a tequila Manhattan in Houston. The guy said to me, I want to make you a tequila Manhattan. Say you're out of your mind. I tasted it. It was unbelievable. So, more bourbon if you like, more rye if you like, only one of them if you like, doesn't matter. Okay? So you get them all into your, uh, into your beaker there. Put a, some bitters go in there now. One dash Shake or in two, there. it's up to two, you. Two, one, two, you're good, okay? And then you take your mixing spoon, cocktail spoon, and now what you do is you have to hold the spoon against the glass, and you go slowly, and you go how many times? 33. 33 times. Why? Because 33 is a magic number. Why? because I came up with it, and I just said 33. It could be 35, it could be 28, but it has to be a minimum of 20. 
and you just count them out nice and slow. And now, you know, when you do this for a friend that comes over, you know, you do this and they go, wow, you know, that's really cool. And, you know, it makes it look like you're really giving them a treat instead of just throwing something in the glass and, and giving it to them. All right, so now we've stirred it up. Now, before we even get to this glass, there's another important step. Um, it's a lot for your palate on the nose, as well as the overall essence of the cocktail. You want to just take about maybe half an inch of your orange rind. Mm -hmm. Just enough to make a nice sliver like this. You want to do it right over the glass and do a nice curl so any of the zest goes in the glass. You want to take a skewer, because we are going to put one of the cherries in there for flavor. Put the cherry right in there. And then you just want to rim your glass all the way around with the orange, creating a flag of sorts. From that point on, we are almost at the final step where I'm just gonna pour this over ice. Mmm. And you're ready to enjoy. Mmm. So right now we have Randy. He is our official taster of everything in our restaurant that is bourbon. <laughs> uh, cheers, I start with the cherry. It's delicious. Um, it kind of coats the palate. It brings out the full flavor and the sweetness of the drink. Superb. Nice job. If you want to get the recipe for this, go to cafeora.com. We'll, we'll be posting this recipe and all the other recipes we're doing during these shoots. Thanks. Stay safe.